Zbudowaliśmy mini studio Voice House na jednej z najważniejszych konferencji o sztucznej inteligencji w Polsce. Dzięki temu mieliśmy dostęp do super specjalistów, z którymi mogliśmy rozmawiać o tym, jak AI pracuje w ich branżach. Marketing, nauka, zdrowie albo banki. Te rozmowy mają formę fire chat, dosłownie pięciominutowych setów o najważniejszych rzeczach wokół AI. Wierzę, że to dla ciebie będzie coś wartościowego. I mean, I think you've had a challenge with regulation previously that it's often having to move quite slowly and react to fast moving technology. And I think there's an openness from regulations to be uh, more anticipatory and also more of a partner working more collaboratively. I think what's also interesting is that you see a lot of individuals are actually uh, reporting quite a lot in terms of productivity gains, but it's just not translating to organizational performance. I think a lot of banks were expecting to be outside of the sort of pilot stage by now. And certainly that's what the frustration is coming from saying, where is the return on, on that investment? Moim gościem na SAS Innovation Tour był Jeremy Kingsley, Tech and Foresight of Economist Impact. So we will be discussing about the future uh, in front of um, uh, intelligent banking, uh, whatever it means. But uh, the report shows that AI adoption is uh, nearly universal, but ROI uh, remains uh, limited. What do you think, um, what's driving this gap between adoption and, and impact? Yeah, I think it's I think it's quite interesting because although AI has been adopted in the banking sector for yeah. a number of years, machine learning and fraud detection, etc., it's quite familiar to banking. Uh, with generative AI, there's huge amounts of adoption, um, lots of enthusiasm and uh, investment, but actually relatively limited gains. So in our survey, we saw that 60% reported limited gains from the generative AI. Uh, 11% said uh, no returns. Uh, at all, and there's a bit of a frustration among yeah. executives about because of the of the of the tempo, not too fast as they wanted to be. I think a lot of banks were expecting to be outside of the sort of pilot stage oh, yeah. by now, and certainly that's what the frustration is coming from. Saying where is the return on on that investment? And I think there are, I mean, there are a few reasons for that. And I think there are a lot of the sort of familiar tech challenges that you get with any technology around you know, data, making sure it is not siloed or sort of in archaic systems, the issues around uh, talent, hiring the right talent, oh, but yeah. also embedding it throughout the organization. Um, and a whole host of issues around risk and compliance that are causing, you know, bottlenecks uh, there. But I think what's also interesting is that you see a lot of individuals are actually uh, reporting quite a lot in terms of productivity gains, but it's just not translating to yeah. organizational performance. And that's because you have to really reinvent the organization mm. around some of these new capabilities. Mm. Yeah, I, I heard that, and I read in the report that one of the major uh, topic is uh, that resilience is more than a safeguard. It's a catalyst. What does it mean? I, I think that is about resilience being about innovating from a position of greater stability, right? So you see a lot of banks who are actually sort of firefighting, this is what they said in our report, firefighting around fraud, compliance issues, very much on the back foot with a lot of macroeconomic volatility and disruption in the industry. But if you get a lot of those governance frameworks in place, you can actually be in a stronger position to put that energy in towards innovation, right? And so actually there's a kind of theme that emerges from those conversations, which is an appetite for governance, an appetite yeah. Uh, for regulation. And that in turn is also through good governance is translating to uh, greater customer trust, which breeds loyalty, which also breeds a bit of a catalyst for growth as well. So uh, it's an interesting theme that emerges in the report. Yeah. What was uh, quite shocking for me when I was reading that 68% uh, of respondents see regulation as a enabler of innovation. Uh, so that's not a common narrative, I, I think, uh, especially now here in Poland. Why is regulation being viewed more positively maybe especially now? Uh, I think I think I, I wouldn't read that necessarily as a sort of positive uh, love of regulation. Yeah. I just think it's a desire for clarity among mm. banking executives, right? We know so the think, direction, for example. We know the direction, and that's what we what we hear from um, those that we spoke to. We want, you know, clear frameworks, sensible guardrails, and using that as a framework from which you can yeah, innovate. It's much more safer, yep. Much safer, but also seeing that as, I mean, I think you've had a challenge with regulation previously that it's uh, often having to move quite slowly and react to fast moving technology. And I think there's an openness from regulations to be uh, more anticipatory and also more of a partner working more collaboratively. 
uh, with business, and certainly that's the case in in banking. And so I think there's a there's a greater welcome welcomeness from banks to to that. Knowing this and hearing the respondents, uh, what is the idea for uh, banking leaders? Some kind of takeaway or maybe takeaways? Uh, what it would be? I think it's this this question of governance, right? That underpins everything. So it is about having strong data governance, strong AI governance that provides um, and sort of embedding that throughout the organization in your sort of people processes controls and that provides a foundation that is for resilience but it's also for innovation and it's also the case that 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 sets you up not just for AI and all of that disruption yeah. but often is good work to prep you uh, in a sort of future forward way for other disruption and different technologies to come. I'm thinking about, because we've been discussing about the leaders of banks, but uh, I'm thinking about the clients of banks. Uh, if they will need more AI tools, for example, for them, so it will be not discussion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so thank you very much uh, for uh, for the interview. Thank you very much. Cheers. Mm -hmm.